Fawcett, you're in for a treat, ladies and gentlemen. We have a real professor! <laughs> from the University of Edinburgh! Yeah. <laughs> Will you please put your hands together and make it feel very welcome. Welcome to the stage, Professor Phil Wadler, ladies and gentlemen! <laughs> Good evening. My name's Philip Wadler. As I think he just explained, I'm professor of theoretical computing science at the University of Edinburgh. And tonight, I would like to speak to you about the absolutely hilarious subject of computability theory. <laughs> I told you it was hilarious. An algorithm is a sequence of steps performed by a computer. <laughs> These days, we think a computer is a machine, but originally, computer was a name for a person, the person who executed the algorithm. Algorithms go back to Euclid's elements in classical Greece, and eponymously, the work of Al-Khwarizmi in 9th century Persia. But it wasn't until the 20th century that there was a formal definition of algorithm when Alonzo Church, Kurt Gödel and Alan Turing, all within a year of each other, published work formally defining algorithm. It's like buses. <laughs> it took 2,000 years for formal definition of algorithm, and then three come along at once. Why did this happen? So as the 20th century dawned, David Hilbert in Göttingen was one of the foremost proponents of formal logic, and his goal was to put all mathematicians out of work. <laughs> <laughs> what he wanted was an algorithm that if you gave it a statement in formal logic, it would compute whether it was true or false. This was called the Entscheidungsproblem. <laughs> because it sounds better in German. <laughs> Where was I? <laughs> yes, thank you. Um, because he thought logic was complete. What that means is that everything that is provable is true, and everything that is true is provable. In 1930, in Vienna, Kurt Gödel came up with his proof of the undecidability, sorry, the incompleteness theorem. So this completely, I'm going to use the technical term here, screwed Hilbert. <laughs> What Gödel did was he figured out how to write down this sentence in formal logic. The sentence says, this statement is not provable. <laughs> now, the way he could write it down is he figured out how to take formal statements and turn them into um, numbers, and how to take proofs and turn them into numbers. So just in arithmetic, he could write down, this statement is not provable. Uh-oh. <laughs> because if it's false, then it must be provable, and you've just proven something which is false, <laughs> which you should not be able to do. <laughs> if it's true, then it's not provable, and hey, we're incomplete, there is a true statement that is not provable. So that's not as bad as proving that something's false, but it is very irritating. <laughs> So as long as they thought the Entscheidungs uh, problem could be solved, you didn't need a formal definition because you could just look at it and decide whether you had an algorithm or not. It was sort of like Justice Stewart's definition of pornography. 
I know it when I see it. <laughs> but if you wanted to show the Entscheidung's problem unsolvable, then you needed a formal definition of algorithm. The first of these was done by Alonzo Church at Princeton. He defined something called lambda calculus. Let's hear a cheer over there for the yeah. lambda calculus. Yeah. <laughs> these, guys, these guys like me all work with lambda calculus. <laughs> so lambda calculus is the world's coolest programming language. It only has three constructs, and it's especially cool because it was developed more than a decade before the first computer. Ooh. Now, my friends and I, when we go and talk to industrialists, they say, oh, this math stuff, this is just too hard for us. But these days, um, all of a sudden it's become trendy, and mainstream programming languages like Java and Python and C++, they are all boasting, we have lambdas! <laughs> Great guys who finally caught up with the church in the mid-1930s. Kurt Gödel, remember him? He was visiting Princeton, and he had a word to describe church's definition. He called it thorough. His precise words were, thoroughly unsatisfactory. So church issued a challenge to Gödel. He said, well, you come up with your own definition and I'll prove that mine is at least as good as yours. So Gödel came up with a second definition, recursive functions, and indeed, Church proved that his definition was equivalent to Gödel's. And when Gödel heard this, he said, my definition is equivalent to your definition? Oh, hmm, mine must be wrong then. <laughs> the impasse was resolved by Alan Turing. In Cambridge, who came up with a third definition, what we now call Turing machines. And Turing proved that Turing machines were equivalent to um, the lambda calculus, uh, and hence equivalent to recursive functions. Now, philosophers argue about whether mathematics is invented or discovered. But if you have three independent definitions that all turn out to be equivalent, you have a powerful argument that you have just discovered something interesting. Right? It's not just people in sports who admire a hat trick. <laughs> <laughs> so this finally convinced Gödel and he agreed that all three of them had the right definition. Gödel was 24 when he undermined Hilbert, who was 68. Turing was 23 when he resolved the argument between Church and Gödel, who at that time were 33 and 30. So all you young people out there, <laughs> keep at it. Right? Your job is to keep showing, keep educating your elders to understand what they are doing wrong. <laughs> you have just learned about computability theory. I am Phil Wadler. Good night. Yay!